has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have a few announcements today. Uh, with the first, we have two announcements today, uh, two reminders at any rate. Uh, we are collecting toys and coats for children in our local community uh, through our partnership with Fostering Change. This is uh, for foster children in the local area. This is our fourth year partnering with them. Uh, so we want to keep that partnership going. There's a box in the main entryway of the church that's labeled and ready to receive toys and coats for fostering change. So that begin this week and then uh, through next Sunday as well. So uh, if you want to drop things off, you can just come by the church and drop it off in the, in the main entryway in the box labeled fostering change. Next week, we have our annual meeting, or our semi-annual meeting. I'm not sure which one it is, but we have that after worship. Uh, this will be a virtual congregational meeting, and you will receive information two times this week about how to participate via your computer, your smartphone, or your tablet. If you don't have a computer or a smartphone or a tablet that you can connect with, that you can participate in the meeting, Interactively, you can also call in over a regular telephone, uh, and that information will be provided in your email as well. <clears throat> Twice this week you'll get that information. It will not be a meeting on the YouTube live stream. It will be a meeting on Zoom after the YouTube live stream. I know that might sound a bit confusing, but we'll make it work. Uh, things for us to consider next week are the 2021 budget, and also... Uh, we found out that there's some issues with the breaker boxes that we have in uh, the janitor's office. So we're, the council's asking for the congregation to authorize spending up to $15,000 to replace those uh, boxes because they pose a fire safety risk. <coughs> Related to fire, an update on our rebuild this week, Angie, Paul, and I met with the contractors to discuss matters of billing for uh, the rebuild uh, portion of our project. We've received some monies for various things, but that's still an outstanding item that we need to hammer out with the insurance. So that is still ongoing, and we thank you for your patience as we do that. If there are no other announcements this morning, we will begin our worship uh, contemplatively in this new church year, Advent 1. Thank you. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who forgives all our sins. O God, have mercy and yours forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful Father, I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven, and before you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned by my own fault in thought, word, and deed. A remorseful sinner, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God does forgive us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear down, tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood, and water causes, fire causes water to boil, to make the name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You met those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us, and to have delivered us into the hand of our own iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. <coughs> now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Shaken. 
Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and great glory. Then he will send out the angels to gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So, this is printed on both sides, 
So I'll have to flip. And so Advent is a time for us to appreciate the mystery, the revelation of God's love among us, but it is also a time for us to consider what it means for God's love to also be manifested for us in fullness in the future. We already live here now in this present, in the already present, if you will, but also God's love for us in the just out of our grasp, the future. That's what Advent is for. God's promised rain is so close that we can taste it, like a crumb of bread on our lips or a little drop of wine on our tongue. Advent is a time for us to appreciate this already but not yet in between time and ask ourselves, what do we do with our lives of discipleship as disciples of Jesus? What do we make of the promise of Jesus to come again? Do we even devote much of our attention to it? These are things for us to consider today, and actually always. Would you pray with me? May only God's word be spoken, and may only God's word be heard. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Charlie prided himself on being especially, exceedingly punctual. He followed a very precise routine every morning. His alarm went off at 6.30. He rose briskly, shaved, showered, ate breakfast, brushed his teeth, picked up his briefcase, got in his car, drove to the nearby ferry landing, parked his car, rode the ferries whose timetable he had committed to memory, and rode that ferry across the harbor, got off, walked smartly to his building, marched to the elevator, rode it to the 17th floor, hung up his coat, opened his briefcase, put his paper out on his desk, and sat down in his chair precisely at 8 o'clock. Not 7.59, not 8.01, but always 8 o'clock. He followed the same routine every workday without variation for years until one morning, his alarm didn't go off. He overslept by 15 minutes. When he did awake, he was panic-stricken. He rushed through his shower. He nicked himself while he was shaving. He gulped down his breakfast, only half-brushed his teeth, grabbed his suitcase, jumped in his car, sped to the ferry landing, jumped out of his car and looked for the ferry. And there it was. It was out in the water, just feet from the dock. He said to himself, I think I can make it. I think I can make it. And so he ran the length of the dock at full speed, and reaching the edge of the pier, he launched himself, made an enormous leap out over the water, and miraculously landed on the edge of the ferry with a loud thud. And the captain rushed down to make sure that he was okay, and said, wow, that was tremendous. But if you had just waited a minute, we would have reached the dock. <laughs> Timetables, timelines, agendas, schedules, calendars, plans, programs. Timetables. If you're anything like me, God, God willing not, because the world has enough of me, um, you spend a lot of time devoting to keeping track of time. Some of you remember that I have a clock wall in the parsonage, in the front room. I love clocks, but it's not just the clocks, it's time. I'm pretty fanatical about it. Some of you have experienced firsthand, right, Marcia? How I am with time. I like to know what's going to happen, but most importantly, I like to know when it's going to happen. Timelines, agendas, schedules, calendars, plans, programs, timetables. Even the most lackadaisical or carefree among us has to worry about time at some point or another. If you want to plan a vacation and need to use any kind of transportation beyond your own car, a plane, a train, a ship, or whatever, you're going to need to adjust your timetable according to someone else's. At some point or another, every one of us 
becomes beholden to one degree or another to a timetable, one of our own devising or of someone else's. Going to the doctor or the dentist is a good example of how sometimes the constraint of someone else's timetable might make us less than happy. Or the RMV. <laughs> the dreaded RMV, right? Known for making you wait and wait and wait. Studies have shown that on average people wait about 32 minutes for a doctor or dentist. The, R the RMV is actually really shorter according to these same studies. The average wait time at the RMV is only 30 minutes. <laughs> these same studies go on to figure out all kinds of stats about waiting. Do you know how long the average person will spend in their life waiting in line for things? Is that? How, yeah, it's, it's long enough, right? Approximately six months. Six months. That works out to be three days a year. Just waiting in line. Waiting, waiting, waiting. We spend a lot of time waiting. And that's time that could be spent doing something else. And yet, when we do find ourselves at the doctor's office or the dentist's office waiting, or the RMV, or wherever, what do we do? We sit there. We might play games on our phone, text people, read the news, more than likely play that game, or worse, mindlessly scroll through social media to see what's happening, or see something that we've seen four other times as we're scrolling through. And if you don't have a phone to play with, you might pick up one of those magazines, those worn out magazines that have been sitting there already 18 months, and you might leaf through that. I used to do that when I went to the barber when I was growing up. I would read, I would reread old articles in Time magazine, and I could never understand why uh, the, the barber didn't bring in new magazines for people to look at. They were like about things that had happened two years ago. That's what we read when we sat at the barber waiting. If you're at the doctor, while you're waiting, you might also find yourself growing anxious. Particularly if you're waiting to be seen for an issue for something that you don't know what it is, or if you don't have an answer for it. Or you're waiting with someone else who's going in to see the doctor. We grow anxious with them as we wait to go in with them. Waiting for test results can be much the same way, having blood drawn and waiting to find out what's up. I can still remember as I waited to hear about the results from grandma's surgery. She's had two hips replaced, two shoulders, and three knees. You do the math. <laughs> three knees. I remember waiting to hear how that all went. I trusted the doctor, but I still waited anxiously for the final word. We can all identify with that or something similar to it. The waiting game, we even call it. It rarely, if ever, follows our, our timetable. The waiting game rarely, if ever, follows our timetable. In today's Gospel text, Jesus speaks to the disciples about his return in glory. Now, I love the image that he paints. Of course, apart from the tidbit about the suffering at the very beginning, he goes on to say, the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and great glory. Jesus will Return in grand style. His arrival will fill the sky. No one will miss it. He'll dispatch his angels. I can just see it now. Gabriel and Michael and Raphael leading the, leading the way as they pull all of God's beloved, you and me and everyone else in the, in the whole family of God, from every proverbial corner of the globe, from pole to pole. They'll collect everyone. It'll be tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Jesus describes it in cosmic terms, even. 
quoting both the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Joel. The sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. When Jesus comes back, it will be like nothing else that we've ever seen. Even the planets, suns, and moons will behave differently. Time itself will stand still. Jesus' return is a big deal. It means the promised kingdom of God is finally here in its fullness. The kingdom where we said a few weeks ago, we will be changed. Transfigured from mortal temporal beings to fully embodied, enlivened members of Christ forever. We will be reborn from death to life, from lives of suffering and sorrow to lives of gladness and joy. When Christ comes again, the waiting will be over. No more pandemics or fears of pandemics. No more political intrigues and backbiting and showboating. No more wars. No more death. No more greed. No more vainglory. No more wrath. No more danger. No more envy. No more jealousy. The day of Jesus' return means for us who've been united with him in death and resurrection a day of mercy, a day of grace, a day of fulfilled promise, a day of inexpressible, inestimable love. So naturally, we'd be crazy not to wonder when this might be. What's the timeline? What's the agenda, the plan? When can I mark the date on my calendar so I don't have bridge work scheduled for that day? What's God's timetable for Jesus' return? We don't know. No one knows. Not even heaven's angels. Not even Jesus. Only God the Father, which to a, group, to a degree makes sense, since he's the the source of all things, even time itself. I, I don't know about you, but I get some strange comfort in knowing that not even Jesus knows the day or hour of his return. It's in God's control. The same God who created the planets, the, the suns, the moons, the plants, the animals, the, the seas, and the fish that are in them, and the birds that fly across the air, even created us. That God is in control. That God who saved Noah and his family in the ark. That God who redeemed the Hebrew people from slavery in Egypt. The same God who delivered Daniel from the mouth of lions and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego from the flames of a fiery furnace. The same God who remained faithful to his people in captivity and brought them back to the holy city of Jerusalem from a foreign land. And the same God who for us and for our sake was born into poverty to a poor, insignificant teenage girl, pregnant, out of wedlock by the power of the Holy Spirit, who grew up like us, who worked like us, laughed like us, got sick like us, had friends and family die like we do, and he who himself ultimately faced the same death that we all face. This same God is in control and remains in control, and it's his plan, God's timetable, that dictates when Jesus will return. Not ours, not the Democrats, not the Republicans, not Wall Street. God's timetable and God's timetable alone. No matter how much we try to control it or how much we attempt to figure out when it will be, Jesus will return, and it's not up to us, but it's up to God's timetable. We wait in hope and expectation and trust that just as God has always been faithful since the dawn of creation to those whom he calls his own, he will be faithful to us whom he calls his own. Not account of anything that we've done.
done good or bad, but on account of the mercy and love shown us in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so what do we do? What are we to do while we wait? Do we sit around anxiously, waiting and fretting, that although we don't know the, the day or hour, that the return of Jesus won't happen the way that we want it to or when we want it to? Or do we sit and wait anxiously, fretting about what the cosmic shift that indescribable fundamental upending of life as we know it, what that will mean for us when Jesus comes back. But Jesus has a simple message for us today. No. We learn the lesson from the fig tree or any other tree called to bear fruit. We go about our lives as normal, doing what we're called to do as disciples of Jesus, living as God's faithful people, hearing God's word, partaking together in his body and blood, sharing the good news of Christ, not only by what we say, but by what we do, serving all people, following the example of Jesus, and yes, even that great and high and lofty goal of striving for justice and peace wherever we are, beginning in our own relationships and going outward. Each morning we rise and we live our lives. Whether we follow a very quite precise routine every morning or whether we take the happenings of each day as they come, we go about our lives in the sure and unshakable conviction that Jesus is coming back. We don't know the day or hour, but we do know that he is coming. God has a plan, and Jesus will come back to claim us once and for all, to establish his reign of love according to God's timetable. The dawn is, a quickly, is quickly approaching when Jesus will return on the clouds of glory, and we with him will at length join the heavenly multitudes, thousand thousand saints and angels at his throne attending, and we with them will then eternally swell that glad refrain, hallelujah, praise him, praise him. Until that time, I say to you, and I say to all, keep awake, the time is drawing near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together with the whole church across time and place, let us pray for all those who are in need. For the Church of God, that all denominations can come together to promote peace, grace, and love as we watch, wait, and hope during the season of Advent. We hold in our prayer our bishops, James and Elizabeth, our Pastor Daniel, our church leaders, and our whole Emmanuel Church family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of our earth, that we may strive to protect our environment and preserve our land for generations to come. Keep our oceans and lakes clean, recycle where able, and look to leaders to guide our way. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the peace of the world, that virtues of patience and respect come to the forefront among all nations and among all, us, all of us as children of God. For our President Donald, our Governor Charlie, our Mayor Stephen, we pray to guide their leadership during these trying times. We pray for all of our frontline workers who selflessly put themselves at risk to care for us and keep us safe. Instill in them the strength, courage, and hope they need as we continue to navigate this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the destitute and oppressed, for the unemployed and those with work with workplace uncertainty, for those debilitated by anxiety and depression, for those who are in danger, the aged and the infirm, and those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit. We pray especially for Dorothy Gates, <coughs> Caroline Jo Gates, Luce Rufia, Doug Blair, Karen Hacker, Janine Jones, Susan Clawson, Glenn Carter, and the family of David Head, and those we name aloud now. Maya, Alyssa, Betty, Lori. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Emmanuel, as we gather, gather together remotely to watch, wait, and hope, that we may feel surrounded by the Holy Spirit and our love for our church and for each other. For our restoration team, our organ committee, all the parishes holding us in prayer, and all our church leaders who work hard to overcome our challenges and look out for our best interests moving forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In honor and remembrance of loved ones who have gone before us, especially David Head, grant that, may we, that we may be comforted knowing they are at rest, without pain or sorrow, and living in everlasting and eternal peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting only in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also, also with you. This time you will get your communion packet at the ready.
abundance, we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation, and with them our very lives. Teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need, until the coming of your Son, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Obedience to the command of 
our Lord Jesus Christ, we are bold to pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and until you come again, we profess the resurrection. Come, Lord Jesus. Watch it on the right. 
God.